Hey guys, how you guys doing? I'm out here in the woods. This is actually my camp spot right here. This is a spot uh, where whenever I come out to the woods, this is my primary spot. <clears throat> yes, there's a few other spots I camp in, but this is my primary spot. There's a reason for that. Because right across the forest road right here, right outside of camp, this section of woods right over here, this is where I experienced a lot of my uh, high level of uh, activity, uh, my encounters, vocals, you name it, it's happened right over there. Um, yes, there's been witnesses with me that's actually shared one of my encounters. Um, but, you know, I'm out here just enjoying it. Um, I'll be out here camping here probably in the near, very near future, perhaps within the next week or so. But, um, yeah, this particular area, uh, in the whole surrounding area, um, it's my ECBRO Zone 1. I have my research area broken up into several zones. But Zone 1 right here, this is my hot spot. This is my favorite spot, regardless of anything happens or not. I love being here. Uh, it's just so relaxing. The serenity is amazing. Um, you couldn't ask for a more laid-back, you know, comfortable spot. <clears throat> With the temperatures being hot as it is, being out here in the mountains, you actually have a little bit of a light breeze out here. With a, a you can almost feel that hint of coolness out there. But it's still humid. There's still humid. It's still humid out here. That's all right. But um, I like to check the surrounding camp uh, in the surrounding area because there's a there's a small creek over there. I always check along the creek beds uh, for tracks. Uh, I've, I've seen some bear tracks. Excuse me. I didn't see no bear tracks this time, but I've seen some deer tracks. Deer all over the place here. Bears love it here too. Because uh, we have a lot of edible food sources here for the bears. Uh, there's a lot of different berries, blackberries. And uh, there's these trees that grow all around here. I have yet to identify that berry, no, that tree. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um... One of my observations throughout the years, and one thing I like to tell people, uh, there's a lot of small little things I like to educate people on, especially when for those fellow Bigfoot researchers. Some of you guys have been doing this for years. Some of you guys are new. Well, you know, one of the things I like to talk about, and so sometimes we get into randomly talking on our podcast show, is about tree breaks, tree structures, and so forth. But I, I want to give you guys a little reminder, and for those who don't know, this is going to be probably a shocker for you. Uh, for those who don't have common sense or don't know any better, and, and I'm not trying to put nobody down, but a lot of times when we go out in the woods, we see tree breaks, and the ones that look like they're twisted, we have a tendency to get excited because, oh, it's got a twist in it. It's got to be done by hands. Ladies and gentlemen, let me inform you what very little do people know because a, a, somebody like an arborist who studies, you know, a professional high-level arborist, would be able to tell you that a lot of trees, the fibers, what, what we don't see, but inside the tree, the fibers grow twisted. So when that tree breaks, it's going to appear to have a twist in the break. So when that tree comes down, watch the angle of my hand. That tree comes down, it's twisting because the fibers inside are already twisted. That's the way a tree, the fibers of a tree grow twisted. Not every tree does that. But a majority of trees, there's a lot of trees that have fibers that grow w with a twist in it. And so, therefore, when it breaks, it has a twist in it. That's a true fact. Learn that and keep that in mind. I wanted to let you guys know that. I've spoken on this before. That's why I keep things logical. I'm flesh and blood. And, uh, you know, I study nature. I study wildlife. So, if you want somebody with a more truthful approach to a very objective approach you're talking to him he's well he's talking to you right now but that's who I am and that's who the ECBRO is we like to bring awareness to people who don't have the awareness about nature and the ecology and understand trees do I have a degree in any of this no it's called common sense and years of experience so don't let anyone tell you otherwise because a tree is broken and has a twist, does not guarantee or confirm that it was done by hands. Remember, those trees have twisted fibers that grow inside. So again, when they break, they fall down, they, they break down with a twist. 
Now, something still could have broken it. Bears are very notorious for pushing over and breaking trees. They up, they push them over, they uproot, and when they play on a tree, the tree will break. Heavy storms and wind damage and snow, uh, the weight of ice and snow will break a tree. There's so many other things. Remember, Sasquatch should be your last conclusion. There's so many other things to consider before Sasquatch. Yeah, we want to find Sasquatch evidence. But if you, in order to do so, you must be able to consider and rule out all other possibilities. Keep it logical. Keep it real. This is Daniel Benoit. I'll see you guys soon.